This is a very tricky little geometry problem from the Hamilton Olympiad. Can you work out the missing angle here if ABCD is a square, BDE, F is a rhombus, and AE and F are collinear, that is they make a straight line? It can be hard to know where to start with these problems, and if you're doing this for a real Olympiad exam, you need to write a full a worked solution as well, which makes it even harder. But usually the first step is just to play around with it, and that's what we're going to do in this video until we get the answer. I'll make an extended version that I'll put in my free Olympiad course that you can take over at the Maths Rush website that has a full written solution as well. But here we'll just focus on the logic and the problem solving. So we've got ABCD as a square, BDEF is a rhombus, so I could uh, label uh, its sides as being all equal, that's what it means to be a rhombus and AE and F are collinear, so AEF is a straight line. We want to find this angle ADE. So the first thing to do really in this sort of problem is just to label any angles that we definitely know. I can see for sure that I've got right angles in the square, uh, so I could label uh, all of those if I want to. And we can see that I've also got the bottom half of a square here because DB is a diagonal, so we could see that these angles here would be 45 degrees, uh, each. I'm not going to write degrees on all of the angles, the units I'm using here are degrees. And so we've actually made a little bit of progress here already because we can see that to work out this angle all I need to do now is to be able to work out this angle. The trick to a lot of these problems is to add in extra lines that uh, will be helpful. And there's a couple of choices here I think. One that you might think about adding in is this line here, uh, BE because uh, that would give us an isosceles triangle, and isosceles triangles are often the way to solve these sorts of problems. But the problem here is I don't now have a particularly easy way of getting these angles, so I don't think that route particularly goes anywhere. Putting in perpendicular lines and looking for right angle triangles is another good option in these sorts of problems. And we could think about taking a perpendicular from either B or E here perhaps, but let's put the one in uh, from E. So if I make this a right angle, I've got quite a promising looking triangle here where this angle is the one that we know will solve the problem and I've got quite a neat right angle triangle where one of the sides of the rhombus is one of is the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. We still can't get the lengths directly here, so what if we drop the perpendicular from B as well here, so I've also got a right angle uh, in this corner here. Now because we've got the rhombus we know that these two lines are parallel and so we'd also get a right angle where this line meets AEF, the straight line. You could say alternate angles uh, are both 90 degrees or it's fine just to say they're right angles here I think. And so what that means is I've got a 45 degree angle up here and this is a right angled isosceles triangle with a 45 degree angle here. And that's going to be a key to solving this question. There are two types of triangles that come up all the time in Maths Challenge and Olympiad problems, and they're these ones. They're a right-angled isosceles triangle whose angles are 45 degrees, and an equilateral triangle which has angles of 60 degrees. In the first one, by Pythagoras' theorem, we know that if these side lengths have length 1, then this one has length root 2, or in general I could say if they have side lengths of x, then this would be root 2x for the hypotenuse, and those scale factors apply. Similarly for the equilateral triangle, we know if the side length is 2, then if I drop a perpendicular here, that bisects the base, so this length is 1, and by Pythagoras the height is root 3. You can use these triangles to write down sine, cos, and tan of 30, 45, and 60, but we can just use them directly here as well. So we've got a choice in a question like this. We could say without loss of generality, let's call one of the lengths 1 or 2 or whatever you want, because we know that the overall scale of this diagram doesn't impact on the individual angles. If I was writing that up as a formal proof, I would want to say something to that effect. I could avoid that by instead just calling one of the lengths uh, x, and either way we'll get to the angle here. So I'm going to tidy up the diagram for a second and say let's focus on this right angled isosceles triangle, if I called the side lengths 1 and 1, then the hypotenuse would be the square root of 2, or if you like I could call them uh, x and x, and this would be root 2 times x. Let's just stick to the version with numbers for now, because we know we can make that scaling argument. Well, then I've got another right angled triangle here, which is also isosceles, because we've got the two side lengths of the square that must be equal, so that's root 2 and root 2. And then by Pythagoras' theorem, or by our scaling argument, we know that the hypotenuse of that triangle is root 2 times root 2, which is 2. But if we now look at the other right-angled triangle we had, 
We know that this length is also one, it's going to be the same as the blue length that we've drawn in the right angled isosceles triangle there. And because BDEF is a rhombus, so this length here is also two. So we can now work out the angle that we've wanted, right? Because we can see we've got something here which is exactly like this second triangle here, or to be more precise, exactly like one half uh, of that uh, second triangle that we've got here, where we've got a hypotenuse of two and a side length of one. And so we know that the angles are going to be 60 uh, and 30 here. Because of that relationship with sine and cosine, you could say that the inverse sine of one half here is equal to 30 degrees, or if you want to say arc sine of a half is 30 degrees, different notation, same result, or we could just refer to that equilateral triangle. And so we're done because we knew that this whole angle was 45 degrees, half of the right angle in the square. So the one we're looking at uh, in here is just going to be 45 minus 30, which is 15 degrees. And that's the final answer. And if you want to see how to write that up properly for an Olympiad exam, I will put a more extended version of this into the free course I've got over at the Mathsaurus Courses website. Uh, but let's leave it here for this video. And if you want to try more Olympiad problems like this, have a look at this video.